Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another Khan Academy tutorial. We are doing find angles in congruent triangles. Here, this is kind of like the intro to congruency, congruent triangles and figures. And it's fairly simple, so we'll go ahead and get right into it. What is the value of X in the figure shown below? Well, with congruent figures, congruent means that, and that's the symbol, means that they're exact same angles and the exact same side lengths. So if we're looking at this triangle here, we see that this side is 4.5, 4.5, this one is 4, this one is 4, and then they share this side via the reflexive property, so that's also going to be the same. So if we have those all the same sides, that means all their same angles need to be the same also. So we have one triangle here in green, okay, and then we have this orange triangle. It's very important in my opinion to draw out the two triangles in question so you can kind of see some separation it makes it a lot more visual and you're able to see things a lot more clearly the angle in question is this one 116 degrees and this one x now this x is at this uh, obtuse angle so we know it's going to be the only obtuse angle if these are congruent triangles so it's 116 degrees and if you want you can even orient it so that they're facing the same direction and this makes it a little bit easier. So this 30 degrees would be here on the right. Then that would make that 30 degrees on the right. If you flip it back this way, flip it back this way. Uh, let's see the, oh, nope. This one doesn't need to be flipped back. It's already oriented with the, the obtuse angle on top. So then this would be the 30 angles over here, 30 degree angle over there. And then you could find the last angle if you really wanted to. I'm just showing you how to do other problems in case you encounter this in other situations. You can find this last one by doing 180 minus 116 minus 30. So a couple different options to do, but we know this angle is 116. All right, next question. What is the value of X in the figure shown below? Okay, let's verify that they are congruent. We have a side, we have a second side, and a third side via the reflexive property. So we have our obtuse angle here, matches with this obtuse angle, 111. Okay, if we were to orient these two triangles, okay, let's draw them out real quick. We could flip this one so that the obtuse angle is on top. There's the 111 right here, and the 31 would be here on the right. Then we have our purple triangle. Okay, we're gonna put its obtuse angle on top. And we see that it's almost like a mirror image on this one. Oh no, I drew my, I, I drew this one wrong. I gotta flip it a little bit different. I'm being a little picky. You probably don't need to worry about this too much, but, and this one was 111. Okay, and this one's gotta be 111, that angle D. We don't care about angle D, we care about angle X. And we see that X is in this spot in the left. So X would be here in that spot. And it's kind of good that I talked you through how to do this in the first problem. So what we need to do is we need to find X by doing 180 minus 111 minus 31. Oops, 180 minus 111 minus 31. Okay, so once we do, so I'm using this triangle right here because we already have two angles and we can use the triangle uh, angle sum theorem to find our missing angle X. And that is going to equal X. And we get X equals 38. So that X will also be the 38 because they're congruent. So X equals 38. All right, next question. Again, it's all about, in my opinion, separating your triangles, drawing them, and reorienting them so that they look the same. What is the value of X in the figure shown? We got to check that all the sides are equal. Um, in this one, we're going to have to make an assumption here. Uh, I don't haven't talked about this in my class yet, but there's certain postulates that you can prove angles or excuse me triangles congruent, and this one is definitely applying here. But for now, we're just assuming that they're congruent because they're told here. Otherwise, this is going to be a side angle side or uh, angle side angle for uh, some of you folks that are already in that section. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about that yet. Uh, this is just the intro. So we have vertical angles there, so we know this is 92 degrees. And you can see that this is mirrored. So sometimes this happens, and they can be mirrored and still congruent. 
So right here we draw a line and it's mirrored. So this 35 is the same as this 35 here. So that's a 35 degree angle because it's mirrored. It's like flipped over on its uh, lateral edge. So we have 35 is the answer there. Again, it's important to separate the triangles. Okay, we have our triangle on the right. We have our triangle on the left. And we gotta see how they're congruent. Are they reoriented? Okay, do you have to flip one? Do you have to flip the other one too? Do you have, are they mirror images? So it's important to check those things to make sure that you're finding if all the angles are congruent. Looks like we have another flipped one here. Anytime you have this like intersection like this, where you have vertical angles, you're probably gonna have a mirrored situation. So this is gonna be 32. Uh, so we have this 66 here at the bottom. So that means that this is gonna be 66 at the bottom. And now we just need to use the triangle angle sum theorem to find our last angle X. So we're gonna do 180 minus 66 minus 32, and that's gonna be equal to our X. 180 minus 66 minus 32, simply 82. And that's the same on both sides, so that would be 82 also. Put 82, and we're done. I was waiting for that, it took a while. Hopefully you guys had the same success. Hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.